Before our list view is done for our resorts, we're gonna add one extra Swift UI modifier that really improves user experience, which is of course the searchable modifier. So that when we're on this main screen of resorts, we can just pull up and search a particular resort by name in here to find the exact thing our user's looking for. Now this actually only takes four steps to Swift UI. It's really, really nice. And it starts with a new at state property in our content view, to track the text string the user's currently searching for. So I'll say in here, at state, private var, search text is an empty string. So that's what we're typing right now. Second, we're gonna bind that to our content view, to in our list, to say, uh, give me a search bar, and I type things in there, put into the property right here. So we'll find our uh, list down here. We already have this nav title resorts. I'm gonna say in here, uh, this is a searchable list with a text bound to dollar search text. And the prompt will be uh, search for a resort like that. So that's step two. We've now made the property, made the binding to the property, so we'll update it as we go. Third, we need to cre a, create a computer property. You're so hungry. A computer property that will handle the filtering of our list based on this search text property we added already. And if that's empty, fine. We just send back all the results we have just the default set. Otherwise, we'll use the same localized case intensive contains method I showed you earlier to filter our array based on their search criteria. So I'll make a property down here called filtered resorts, which is turns an array of resort. And again, if the search text is empty, fine. Is empty, send back all our resorts by default. So the default set of resorts just works. Otherwise, if I type anything at all in here, so hungry, you get fed all the time. You do, you get fed a lot. You, you steal food too, you little horror. <laughs> Otherwise, return our resorts array filtered. Uh, filter, sorry, like this. Uh, the check will say is, does this value have a name that when you call localized, case in that it contains, does it return true for search text? Does that name contain the search text somewhere inside there? If so, send it back. That should be resorts, which is why it probably failed earlier. Um, pass the whole array through that filter method saying, do you contain search text? Do you, do you, do you, do you, do you, again, and again, and again, until it says true. That's in the final array. That's step three. So we're almost done already, three quarters done. The final step is now to use this filtered resorts property for our list. So up here we have list over our main resource property. We just say list over filter resource property like that. And literally we're done already. That was the entire piece of work. If you run the code now, go and admire my work dog. Look dog, it's amazing. Um, we can just pull down from here. <laughs> we pull down from here and type part of a name in here. And I'll say I want to look for S. So all those have an S in there somewhere. I'll do ST. And only Whistler now matches, and boom, in pops Whistler. So it's a really, really easy feature to implement. It takes hardly any work, quite frankly. I think it's probably one of the biggest bang for buck Swift UI features out there, quite frankly, because it's such an important feature for users, and it took us just a few minutes to implement in this application.